Hey everyone, Ruben Lari here. I hope everyone's getting an opportunity to do some sketching or drawing during their time at home. Well, in this time lapse, I just wanted to talk about the power of primitive shapes. I'm just using basic cubes, spheres, and cylinders to flesh out a scene here. I'm looking at reference on my other screen, but uh, as you probably guessed already, this is a scene from Peter Jackson's King Kong. But look how much action and weight and composition we can already achieve just roughing out a scene with these basic shapes. And what I love about this method is uh, that I'm able to you know, quickly grab the lasso tool and just make rotations, make scale adjustments. It's also helping me in my mind get a sense of the volumes for this next stage. One of the things I love about Clip Studio is the lasso fill tool. So many uses for it. And in this particular case, I'm just blocking out a big silhouette, as you can see. Uh, and to eat out of the lasso tool, I'm just hitting the letter C. So C uh, flips between painting with opacity and painting with transparency, like in any brush. But like any brush, it also works with the lasso fill tool. So it's such a fun process because you're just sculpting in a shape, eating out of it, bringing it back in, eating out. Um, and I find that even for my own, you know, thought process, thinking in volumes, it really helps me with my, with my normal sketching as well, because that's what I'm doing when I'm doing it. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about what is this, you know, what does this cube looks like? What does this, cil this cylinder look like? Um, you know, what is the nature of, of this landscape in this, you know, in this particular case, just a real quick way to, to black out a composition. The next thing I'm doing is I'm adding an adjustment layer, in this case, just a, a curves, which I've you know made it darker and then gone to the mask and hit delete. So now when I paint with the lasso tool, either with a brush, a pencil, or the lasso fill tool, it kind of brings back in the darkness of that curve. Also love this method because now, um, you know, instead of sculpting a, sculpting a silhouette, I'm sculpting in, the, sculpting in the lighting. I'm just laying in all these shadows. Um, you'll see me reworking this, this face a lot. I just feel like, the design of Peter Jackson's King Kong is so unique. It, it does take me a few tries to to get those proportions in. But anyway, I just I really enjoy this process of eating in and out. It's kind of non-destructive in many ways, uh, which is what I like about it as well. And you'll notice I'm, I'm keeping my uh, primitive shapes there as kind of a block in uh, so that I can just remind myself, you know, what the perspective is as I, as I lay in these, these shadows. A few seconds ago, uh, I just want to point out one of the other things I love about Clip Studio is I actually selected the adjustment layer and the layer that the King, King Kong shape uh, silhouette was on, did a lasso tool and transformed both. So in Clip Studio, you can transform across multiple layers, uh, including adjustment layers, which I, which I just love. Uh, such a great feature. So moving out of the dinosaur here, just blocking in those, sh those shadows and, and those big light shapes. Uh, I just pulled up the hue saturation lightness slider to darken, I think, what did I do? I think I darkened the uh, the dinosaur silhouette just a little bit. Again, it's almost, I kind of think of this as a non-destructive way of drawing because I have just that big flat layer uh, of the silhouette, which I think right there is labeled layer four. And if I just want to keep going back and adjusting that silhouette, just go back to it and all my lighting stays, which is really nice. So there I've added a, a light tone curve on top of that. So I'm just, you know, basically doing the same process there. This particular uh, lasso fill tool I've set to not anti-alias. Um, I just like that hard edge for some reason. I've been doing that more. There we go, Dark, darkening that, that dinosaur. And all of the, the value of the tone curves stays, right? Because they're just layers on top. You'll also see me take the blend tool to the mask of either the darker or the lighter adjustment layer, and you'll see some of those areas are just kind of blended out uh, just to soften those edges. I do a lot of flipping, make sure my shapes are good. Just a real graphic way of, of blocking in. Super fun. Giving it a small little vignette on the edges with another tone curve. Now here I'm using the, um, the gradient map, which is a super fun way to play around with color. They have different categories there, uh, and you can see here that I've, um, you know, I'm actually blending a combination of both of them. So, yeah, just playing around with two gradient map uh, maps, deleting the mask for the one, and slightly bringing it in. Just a great way to play around with color and, and these silhouettes. Here I'm just making a selection around K2 
King Kong and darkening him a little bit against the uh, against the background. Once again, I'm going into the face. I just felt like it just wasn't hitting the proportions of that great character design that I love so much about this particular Kong. Get that little eyeball in there. What great character development in this in this version of the film. So there you go. It's um, once again, what I'm trying to highlight here is just the power of simple shapes. And of course, this is a style into itself, but as an exercise, it's so powerful because you're really forcing yourself to think about big masses, big planes, not partic you know, not get lost particularly in all the tiny details of something, but just the texture of things, what parts of texture are catching light, you know, which ones can, can recede into shadow. And uh, as always with this style, I'm always amazed and pleased with how much drama you can accomplish just with some simple, simple tones. And I keep on emphasizing how important it is to brush up on your perspective fundamentals. If you need help with that, make sure to check out my tutorial, Four Secrets to Drawing in Perspective Like the Pros, available on gumroad.com or Skillshare. I've gotten lots of great feedback on it, and it really just helps you understand what is happening with the perspective grid so that you can start tumbling cubes, spheres, and cylinders like you see me doing in this demonstration. All right, I hope everyone is healthy and safe. Make sure to take some time to do some positive things for your mental health. Like and subscribe to stay updated on future lessons, and we'll see you next time.